Hey everybody, my name is Ashley Rush and I'm an independent creative memories advisor located in North Carolina. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about adding memorabilia to your scrapbook. It's those ticket stubs, postcards, brochures that really help add a special touch to your scrapbook. It helps really bring you into the moment that those photos were taken. A couple weeks ago, I introduced you guys to Peekaboo Pockets. It was the perfect way to add extra photos and postcards to your album. Unfortunately, those only come in 4x6, 5x7, and 6x12 sizes. Sometimes we're going to need something that doesn't fit into those perfect little boxes, and that's where pocket pages are going to come into play. This is the perfect way to add those larger pamphlets, certificates, and other things to your albums that um, you want to be able to pull out and admire, but also keep safe inside of your scrapbook. To do this, all you're going to need are two sheets of paper, your 12 inch trimmer, a scoring blade, and then your tape runner. For me, I'm using two designer sheets of paper. You could swap out one or more of these with cardstock if you like. So the first thing we're going to need to do is switch out our scoring blade. We actually won't be making any cuts with this um, project, so you will only need your scoring blade. If you don't have a scoring blade, that's okay. You can do this project without it. It's just going to be a little more difficult when it comes to measuring where to make your folds. Now that I've got my blade in place, I'm going to extend my arm and pull out my sheet of paper. I'm choosing this sheet with my Christmas icons. You're going to want to make sure you enjoy both sides of your paper. That's why I recommend using designer paper versus cardstock to make the actual pocket. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line my paper up at the six inch line and score here. You're going to want to make sure you use firm pressure, maybe go over it once or twice, but don't go too fast because the pressure plus fast um, could end up ripping the edges of your paper. So once you've got your six inch line scored, I want you to slide your paper down and you're going to do a two inch line. Then you're going to repeat one more time at the one inch mark. Now that you've scored your three lines at six, two, and one, you can put your trimmer aside. You're not going to need it anymore. Now you're going to take your paper and you're just going to follow those lines that you scored and complete the folds. It doesn't matter so much which direction you're going right now. All right. This is when you need to decide which of your patterns you want to be forward facing. For me, I think I want to really um, feature this designer icon. So I'm going to make it so that the six inch piece of my paper is the plaid. Then I'm going to flip that up. And now the front of my pocket is going to be this Christmas icon paper. Then I'm going to find my next fold and flip that down. And then the last fold you flip right back up. This fold really gives you a nice thick piece of paper so that it doesn't tear when you're adding things to your pocket and removing them. Alright, you've got the base of your pocket done. Now you're just going to come in with your tape runner and really secure the edges. Obviously you're going to want to secure your side edges here. 
your bottom edge will already be done because of the fold and you'll want to keep your top edge empty so that you can actually add things to your pocket. You'll also want to add some tape runner here to complete that edge. And then you'll want to add some tape runner underneath of this one inch slit so that you can secure it to your pocket. Before you make that secure, you can add another piece of paper or a sticker to give you some pop between these two papers. All right, it's really important that you use our traditional tape runner and not our repositionable because this is what's gonna help hold your pocket together. And you aren't gonna wanna be chintzy. This is a chance for you to be liberal with your tape runner. All right, the base of my pocket is done. Next, I'm gonna secure this piece. And I do wanna put some definition between this edge of the pocket, making the reinforced edge just to make it pop. Um, as I said, you could do that by adding a little piece of paper underneath, but I think I'm just gonna add a sticker um, on the seam and that'll help. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape that down. All right, and then I'm gonna find one of our Joy to the World stickers, so it coordinates. And I think I'm just gonna use this little blue. In fact, I might use both. Well, let's, hmm. Sure, let's go ahead and use both so it's good and thick. I'm just applying that to the seam. And now our pocket is complete. The last thing you have to do is adhere it to your paper. You can put it anywhere you want on your page. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave about a one inch margin at the bottom. I'm not really measuring that. And again, you're gonna wanna use plenty of tape runner. Of course, you're gonna do your sides, right and left. Here, you'll have to do your bottom so that you can, it, keep the pocket from um, <clears throat> coming off. You can choose to do the top or not. If you don't do the top, then you'll actually have a double layer pocket. So that could be kind of fun for adding lots of memorabilia later. Remember, this is an instance where more tape runner is better. All right, I plan on using this page for my children's letters to Santa. We actually write letters to Santa every year, but we recently found a mailbox in our town that will um, send letters back to the kids from Santa. So those letters will be featured here um, so that they can pull them out and read them at a later date. So with this one, um, because I added that tape to the back, you have a very shallow pocket at the top, but not very deep. I did a couple other samples. This one I also used the Joy to the World paper. And as you can see, I went ahead and made the, the dual pocket. I've got this pocket in the front. And then I made sure to keep this open so that I could put larger products in that as well. 
here, um, instead of adding the sticker, I just tucked a coordinating sheet of paper up underneath before I secured that fold down to give it a little pop of color against the patterned paper. And you don't have to um, do just rectangular um, pockets here. I did that because that was gonna be the easiest and required the least amount of tools. But several years ago, I actually made a pocket page using our jumbo hexagon. So this was really cute. I did it for a Mother's Day spread. Um, and I just, I cut two hexagons actually. And I used one for the base and then I cut the other one to use as the pocket. And this is where I stuck the Mother's Day cards for my daughter. So I obviously wanted to be able to pull this out and, and enjoy it because my daughter was being very punny. Um, and in order to get the full effect of the card, you needed to be able to extend it down. So that is what I did with my hexagon custom cutting system. So if you guys ever needed to use a pocket page and tried to figure out um, how to include your memorabilia, um, I would love to see pictures of you guys using this technique. You can tag me on Instagram at Scrap with Ash or post them on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash scrap with ash. Thank you all for tuning in. Because of each and every one of you, I am so close to meeting my next subscriber goal, and I would love to do that by Christmas. So make sure you guys share this channel with any of your scrapbooking and crafty friends. If you're new, make sure you guys like and subscribe to my channel. And if you never want to miss a video, hit that bell as well. I look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye.